Hello and welcome everybody. Ethereum is part of the Sony Network Communications and Asta Network Accelerator Program. And this was our pitch at Sony Demo Day in Tokyo, Japan. Our pitch was centered around how a gamer can own and trade their data and how this entire solution was built on the Ethereum protocol. So let's explore this. As you all know, Ethereum believes that your data is a very valuable asset, especially in the AI world that we live in today. And you should have the ability to truly own your data assets and then decide if you want to trade them or if you want to keep them secure under your control. Now, if you look at the gaming industry, there is a significant amount of data being generated. Sony PlayStation has 108 million active users globally, generating probably terabytes worth of gaming data daily. So imagine if you could use Web3 technology to activate some of these gamers into a super engaged community of brand ambassadors. Now, if you give someone ownership of their data, they would by essence be aligned to your brand because you have given them something they've never had before ownership of their own data so this was our pitch can we empower sony playstation's 108 million active users with the ability to own some of their gaming data now imagine even if it was just one percent of the entire uh, gamers that you see here that would be over 1 million active users who might have this ability so it's a huge market and it's a very exciting market and it's something that's never been achieved before or even attempted before in the past so the idea ethereum came up with was that as a playstation gamer that you should own some of your gaming data and this could be achieved through a product that we've conceptually called the playstation web 3 passport and here is how it works so you got gamers here playing uh, using place on the PlayStation Network, having PlayStation devices, playing multiple games. Uh, PlayStation gamers are also part of programs like PlayStation Stars and PlayStation Trophies, where their achievements and their loyalty is rewarded by the PlayStation Network platform. Theoretically, using a public PlayStation APIs, a gamer will be able to prove that they own a PlayStation account and mint their data as data NFTs on the Ethereum platform. They then, with consent, can decide to put these data NFTs on the data NFT marketplace. Now, what you would see is as more gamers do this, so let's say 100 gamers do it, 1,000, 100,000, 1 million, the data NFT marketplace becomes a very valuable pool of uniformed PlayStation gaming data which would be very attractive to gaming studios and other data consumers who would like to run analytics on these bulk data sets. Keep in mind, this data is sourced with consent with the game, from the gamer and with shared value with the gamer. So this has never been done before. In the current Web2 world, data is just taken from us by tech giants. But in this scenario, the actual data creator, in this example, a PlayStation gamer, has the ability to have some shared ownership of their data and shared value when their data is being used by big gaming studios or other third parties. So we're going to jump into the demo right now and we're going to show quickly run you through what you're going to see. We're going to first see a PlayStation gamer joining a concept app called the PlayStation Web2 Web3 Passport that was built on Ethereum startup CAT SDK. Data Cat, as of course, as you would know, stands for Data Collection and Analytics Toolkit SDK. This is effectively a framework for you to build a real world Web2 app interacting with real world Web2 data and producing regulation compliant streams of data that could be bridged into Web3. This is a very important component because if you want to empower people with ownership of data in Web3, you need to first create regulation compliant data streams in Web2. And regulation compliance is important because we're looking at jurisdictions like the European Union with their, their laws around GDPR have to be honored. We have to work with regulation to allow users to take ownership of the data and then bridge it into Web3. So the user first joins the PlayStation Web3 Passport 
the regulation compliant data streams are then uh, produced and given to the user. The user can then mint data NFTs, which as you would know, are Web3 licensing layer of, that allows third parties to access a gamer's data. The data NFTs exist in the user's crypto wallet. The user can then choose to place these data NFTs in the peer-to-peer -peer open data marketplace, the data NFT marketplace. And here is where data consumers can come and discover data sets. Now, as more gamers follow this pipeline, we end up with a sort of Web3 data lake of uniform consented data. In this example, uniform data around PlayStation gamers. So then finally, we're gonna see a third party app that's built on our Web3 data consumer SDK that can tap into this uniform Web3 data lake and produce data analytics and, and gaming and game analytics experiences, all with data sourced directly from the gamer with shared value with the gamer. So if you're thinking why you would go through all this effort, just imagine this data is being sourced with consent from the gamer and shared value from the gamer. So the gamer is incentivized to keep producing this data and they are happy because they're part of the, the solution. They are part of the ecosystem. And theoretically, the more data they generate, the more valuable the data set is, and their data is, uh, they could be compensated as well uh, from, uh, from a secondary income or whatever perspective. Their data is valuable. So the more they play now, this pipeline takes more of this data, adds it to the Web3 data lake, as we described here, making it more valuable. And then this cycle just keeps continuing so the gamer just sets all this up once and then just continues to play and the data uh, goes up in value so without any further ado let's just jump straight into this demo so here we got the data decks this uh, this specific version of the data decks is deployed into the asta networks shibuya testnet we have this entire solution already on the multiverse x mainnet so here you can see we have a token deployed on the Asta Shibuya network, which this is a utility token that's required for the protocol to work. The user goes into their data NFT wallet and they can see all their prior data NFTs. Each data NFT is a license on top of a stream of data that they owned or created. They can then go to the data NFT marketplace and they can explore other people's data NFTs and then procure them and access the data. Now we're going to simulate the user joining the Sony PlayStation Web3 Gamer Data Cat app. And you can see here, the experience is seamless. It begins with the gamer connecting their PlayStation account with the Data Cat app. And once it's verified, they can choose their data sovereignty. So in this case, they can decide where they want their original data to be stored in. So here they selected Japan because maybe the game was from Japan. Then they pick the Ethereum Data Marshal, which is the decentralized data broker service that anyone can participate in. Think of it as a distributed node network of data brokers. Here the data stream is now being generated. The data has been de-identified. And finally, what you would get is a single stream and a one-click experience into the data NFT minting form. The user here is then presented with the option to edit a title, a description, and the amount of copies they want to mint of this data NFT license, including the royalties they want to mint if it's a transferable license. And here they're going to click mint data NFT. You will see it goes through the process. It generates a unique image based on the signature of the data. So this is a generative image. And then they pay the gas price here on the, on the Asta network. And what's happening now is a data NFT that's on top of their data stream is being minted and it's going to be now sent into their wallet. So by clicking on this, they're now in their wallet. They can see their data NFT there. They're able to preview the data and they're able to access the data stream as well. Because they own the data NFT in their wallet, the data marshal is able to coordinate the access of the stream. So now the user uh, has produced the data NFT, it's sitting in their wallet. So now we're looking at a, an app, a third party consumer app. In this case, it's the Ethereum Explorer app, which is in fact built on our own SDK, a consumer SDK. So the user has, uh, the third party system has now created an app that supports these 
data NFT. So in this example, it's um, said that, okay, if you want to access this data visualization, you require, you can visualize data from these supported data NFTs. In this example, we have two gamers with test data uh, who are actually integrated into this platform. And you'll notice here that the third party app is able to detect if you own the license to view one gamer over the other. So you'll notice here, we have the license to view one of this. So it says view data, but we don't have the data NFT for the other one, which you're then presented with a very quick link to say, okay, just go and get this data NFT from the marketplace. And then you are able to come back and visualize that data with full consent from the gamer. So in this example, we're gonna actually look at the data NFT already we own. So here we are clicking on it. It proves that I own this data NFT in my wallet and I am able to visualize the raw data of, of this gamer. So here it's pretty rich data. As you can see, you can see all the titles that the, the gamer is playing. You can see their achievements per, per title here. So how many times they've played it, their play time, including as I was saying, their achievements, their total uh, trophies within it and so on. So very rich data. And what you're seeing here is just one gamer. Imagine you multiply this by 100, 1000, 1 million gamers. We are then able to analyze and build more rich analytics apps on top of this. Uh, it was super exciting to get feedback. Uh, and now we are really excited to move this forward and take this app to the mainstream and invite PlayStation gamers to come and explore on how they can have shared ownership of their data. Thank you very much.